All right, everybody, welcome to the show. We're here live at YouthX24, and we got my boys, Ty and Yo. Luke. Hi, Yo, what's up? What's good? Yeah, what's up? How y'all doing? Is everyone doing good? Hope I so. hope so. I hope so. We've gotten little to no rest this entire trip. And I think, I think I'm running like five hours in total for the past two nights. Yeah, yeah. I I can say that last night I got about about an hour of sleep. So, you know, but that's the thing about camp, you know, it's it's about having fun. It's not about how much sleep you get, how much uh, hygiene you doing, stuff like that. How much? Yo, you, you better be taking a shower diet. though. I hope you shower. Every <laughs> I day. hope you shower. <laughs> How much you staying on a diet or how much you working out or anything like that is yeah. about having fun. It says the one that woke up at four in the morning to go, to <laughs> go work out. That's OD. Yeah. That's true. I'm joking. That's true. I love going to the gym, though. So what's your favorite part of this uh, summer camp so far? Low key. Battle X was, wasn't the best this year. That's usually my favorite part of Youth X, but I, I think I'm going to say worship so far. Worship has been fire, and the mosh pits have been going crazy. I about died in the mosh pit today. <laughs> yeah, bro. That one dude collapsed, and then some other girl collapsed later yes, on. Yes, bro. Two people collapsed, and three people were thrown in the air. <laughs> yeah, so I'd, I'd have to say that uh, that I would I would agree about the fact that usually Battle X is my favorite part. Um, but like Ty was saying, this year it just wasn't it. Um, it was all mashed into a few hours in one single day, and it was very short. There was no, um, there was no leading up to who won. It was just like, oh, okay, these people won. Um, and the competition was very quick. Um, the games weren't really, they weren't the best, and they weren't like, um, necessarily last year's either. Um. But I'd also have to say, uh, like diverging from that, I'd have to say that worship was my favorite part. Um, aside from getting to talk to people and get to know people and everything like that, worship was my favorite part um, because not necessarily the mosh pits, even though I did like those. Those were really fun. Um, but just because of the fact that you can be vulnerable and nobody's going to make fun of you for it. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a place where you can you can uh deepen your relationship with God and there's not there's not many distractions around. Um especially since the music's kind of loud so you can't really hear any distractions, which is a good thing. Um yeah. I mean, that's definitely true. Like one of the best things about that I like about the way that the youth does worship is is very it's a very good place to be vulnerable in like I agree I agree today especially like tonight was definitely the best worship experience I've been in by far I mean like yeah every I mean people were stepping out obviously out of their comfort zones but like still they felt a calling from God and a lot of times when we're around friends we won't like kind of like push that back down you know push it under but this was completely different I saw a bunch of youth you know raising their hands and stuff you know getting down on their knees surrendering themselves like just putting themselves in a vulnerable place and like when in my personal opinion when you're down on your knees and you have your hands up you know you're praising God um it's like surrender you're sur you're literally surrendering yeah no I I agree with that um it's a it's a completely different experience than uh I can say for myself from last year um, last year, uh, the event place that we were at, it was so big that nobody really went up to the altar. There were no mosh pits, no nothing like that. Um, and we didn't really get a lot of time to become vulnerable with ourselves. Um, because everybody, every you'd have to stay in your seats because there was nowhere else you could go. Um. But this year, I really liked it because, like Ty was saying again, um, when you're when you're just surrendering to God, it's a it's a whole different feeling. Yeah. What about you? What was your favorite part? 
<clears throat> yeah, um, so this is my third youth ex. My first one, I did not enjoy, mostly because of the friends I invited. They ruined the experience. But also, it was just weird to me. It wasn't really my thing. Last year, like you guys said, we went to Florida, and it was hyped up so much, and they did not deliver. And some of that's their fault, some of that's other things, but like you were saying Luke like you could not really express yourself in those worship experiences you kind of sat there for four hours on a sermon and that's not fun for anybody this year I noticed they did have time limits on sermons which was great and they actually got to their point and had it in like a nice rap I don't really mm -hmm. think any of them were bad I just think some were better than others um so I'd say worship actually uh, I almost said the sermons but the worship this year was something else we had tonight basically three hours of uninterrupted uh worship which was crazy yeah that doesn't happen much especially in youth programs yeah yeah, yeah. um that's that's another thing i liked was tonight it was there was a lot of time um there was a bit of time where we were uh sort of acapella um Mm -hmm. just as a crowd and everybody got to be able to uh say what they wanted to say they got to be able to talk to god um whether it was out loud or um inside their heads um and again people weren't making fun of other people for it because either the people that weren't doing that this time have either been there or they're just not ready to take that step yet it is such a I like the community we built in the youth program here. Like, obviously, there's going to be some, like, you know, a little bit of a little bit of beef. But, I mean, for the most part, everyone's kind of chill with everyone else. So, like, if you're over there, you raising your hands, you worshiping the way you feel God's calling you to worship, and you're ready to take that step, the people that maybe aren't ready to take that step, they're not going to be down on you for it. It's just such a good environment for worship and, you know... Like I said, being vulnerable. Yeah, this year I think it was super different with that because especially tonight I saw it where you had people opening up that you, like I didn't think they would really open up with each other and they didn't care if other people were going over to pray over them or whatever. You had total strangers praying over each other, uh, people getting baptized moments after an hour or two of praying uh, and worship. And that's something cool that I think kind of started last year with some of the themes they were preaching on and what they've been doing this whole year throughout the youth program where they've been able to like I think somebody told me that they were excited for youth acts because the youth are more mature and for the most part that's true I think and it's really shown especially this year at the worship experiences and how even the guys in our group responded to like the sermons and whatever um, and it's created some really cool moments like tonight there's just so many cool moments with so many random people. Some people I see almost every week here at the church, and I don't talk to them because of whatever reason. Uh, but, you know, it's like everybody actually opened up this year. And I'm not going to name names, but somebody in particular, um, I saw kind of step out of their comfort zone, and I was very uh, happy for them because it, that was the environment that we created that it was yeah. just do whatever you want to do in this moment and nobody's going to judge you yeah. mm -hmm. I also think that probably helped uh, uh, like love the middle schoolers to death but like <laughs> yes, bro. obviously there's a big difference between an 18 year old and a 12 year old yeah and I'm they aren't at, they aren't maybe at the level yet to deeply understand some of the topics you're talking about like when pastor when we did the um rhythm or youth podcast yeah. and pastor steven was talking about substance abuse i mean like you can't you don't really talk about that in front of middle schoolers cuz yeah I mean, it's yeah. a little bit more of a mature topic yeah and they haven't most of them have not uh, experienced that yet um, so that's that's sort of why um, it was it was nice that there were not middle schoolers there this year yeah um, because at the same time like uh, during the sermons uh, in past years when middle schoolers have been there 
um, or even just on Wednesday nights or something like that when middle schoolers are there. That's what causes a lot of the commotion and a lot of the noise, excuse me, um, that we hear on Wednesday nights or at previous youth axes. Um, and they, they're not as mature, um, so they can't handle themselves the way that we can. Because we've had, like, say, again, a 12-year-old versus an 18-year-old, that's a six-year age difference. So we've had about six years more than they have worth of knowledge on how to act, when to act certain ways, when it's okay to be funny, and when it's time to be reverent, and um, when it's when it's uh, fun time and when it's serious time. Yeah. Um, so I, I love the fact that the middle schoolers weren't there. Nothing against them because we were all there at one point, obviously. We all been um, through that phase. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sadly, uh, but yeah, I mean, I thought this Youth X was really good, other than Battle X. Um, but again, Youth X isn't just about Battle X, and it's not mainly about Battle X. It's mainly about worship and the sermons, because again, it is through a church, and that's what they're trying to relate to us, is that we should be able to freely worship um, because it's a different experience with when you're with your parents um, than when you're by yourself with your peers. Um, I I can't personally explain the feeling um, even though I know how it feels and makes me feel when I'm with my parents in church versus when I'm with my peers in church. Yeah. Not that that means that I can act up, but I feel more... I feel that I'm able to be more vulnerable when I'm with my peers versus when I'm with um, my parents, per se. Um, and I guess that's because um, possibly um, I have this perception that um, to older people, we shouldn't be vulnerable um, and we should be uh, tough and respectful and everything like that um, so that they think that this generation is good. Um, yeah. 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 No, I one hundred percent understand that. Like, I love I love my parents. I go to church with them pretty much every Sunday. Um, but there's definitely a different feeling when you get to be around people your age that are experiencing the same things that you're maybe experiencing, and just that connection between uh, kids our age. I mean, like here here it's like magnified you don't get that much other places but here it's like uh you can go up and talk to someone like i was at the after party tonight and just some random dude i never met before comes up and talked to me and we had like a whole like 30 minute conversation just chilling and i mean you never knew you never know who you're gonna meet when you come to something like this it's that's one of the things that's really cool about it yeah and one thing that i can say one thing that is different from the high school versus the middle school is um, we know when it's when it's like game time in youth X, um, like battle X, um, and when it's serious time. And when I say that, I mean like during the after party, say I'm not sure if middle school has after parties or not, but if they do, um, middle schoolers, they they tend to really, really be competitive and they don't know when to not stop being competitive and when to start being competitive. Yeah. So they yeah. take it too far and they might take that outside to the after party and they might not be able to talk to people from other teams because they're like, oh, well, you're on a different team, stuff like that. <clears throat> yeah. And that relays into society a lot. Um, in in these um, circumstances in our day and time it could relate to um, it could relate to politics um, like political party oh oh he's he's this uh, she's that I can't talk to them uh, yeah. because of their political affiliation um, or it could be something um, even though it's it's you don't see a lot of it anymore. Um, or you shouldn't at least um, 
it, it could even play into oh well they're they're from this background mm-hmm. I'm from this background I do this this way they do that that way well I think their way is weird and they might think my way is weird um it I think that relays into society a lot yeah I'd even say not just about like going to other teams and everything and meeting people that's another really cool thing that I've always met new people at a youth X every single year, but my experiences have been more so negative the past two years. This year, I could go up to guys and just be friends with them, but I could even go up to girls and have just a mutual, non-like romantic type conversation that I feel like is a very maturity-based thing, but with middle yeah. schoolers, you're not going to get that. And it doesn't care matter, like you said, about the teams. But that's something I've even noticed, like, looking at the surroundings. Like, some people, of course, want a girlfriend. That's cool, whatever. But there's people also that I think we've met some people here that's, like, just mutual. Like, me and Tyler were waiting on DoorDash with Pat for an hour. And there was a girl down there that we are just mutual with her, and we have been. And she's chill. You know, there's yeah. other people that, guys and girls, that are just chill. And it's like, you don't need to be their best friend, but they're just, like, people that will be here for a little bit with you and it's cool to meet people like that and have nice little moments yeah and that's like you said it's maturity based you got to be mature enough to see people as people not as different social groups like it comes down to this not boy not girl like yes that plays a role in it like when you're talking to them and stuff like obviously guys we we should be respectful to women but like still you don't have to have a flirty conversation with every girl you talk to like even like you sing you're single you can have friends that are girls i have plenty of friends that are girls i say some of my best friends are girls but Mm -hmm. doesn't mean i'm attracted to them in any like relationship kind of way yeah or even in certain cases um i mean obviously not for us but uh for the girls it it could be the opposite way Mm -hmm. uh they don't they know don't necessarily have to have flirtatious conversations with guys um and again like both of y'all were saying it does relate to maturity because as you get older you'll realize oh shoot well they're they're just human beings like yeah uh she might be pretty or he might be handsome um or something like that um but at the end of the day, we're all just humans, and we can all have a simple conversation with each other, just like adults do. I mean, they know when it's okay to uh, be romantic um, and stuff like that, and when it's not. Um, or even if they're just talking to each other, um, they might be nice to each other, but they're not necessarily being romantic towards each other, and they understand that. Yeah, Yeah. 100%. And it's, like we all said, it's seeing people as people, not in different, like, groups. Yeah. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, the Bible wants us to love everybody as we love ourselves, as God loves us. We want to pass that love out to everyone else. I heard, uh, oh, I forgot who was preaching that day, but someone, you probably know who it was. was I'm pretty sure it was at a uh, rhythm night, and they were talking about how it was like a mirror and it's like the light goes in at the top and then it comes out like the side and we're supposed to be like that mirror for people i don't remember that was one it john i think it was john it could have yeah. been yeah, john. It was john um it's hard to explain it i think he had i don't know he explained it so well and i i mm. can't co- i can't explain it how he did but yeah. it was really cool the way he did that we're supposed to be like the reflect the light that God shows on us, the grace and love that God shows on us to other people and like not worry about like, oh, it's a girl. I got to be nervous and you know, like, oh, she's pretty. Like, okay. She's pretty, but she's a good, she's a good person. Mm -hmm. Like that's what matters. Yeah. And when you're talking about, um, like reflecting light, um, like John's message, um, think of it as you're taking a picture of um, of a street light at night. Um, when you after you take that picture and you look at the picture, 
without any filter on it, it's going to have some drag on the light. Yeah. And the light is going to be coming down in the picture a little bit because of the way that the camera catches the light. Once you add filters to it, it may dull the light. It may enhance it more. Um, or it could even take away the lines, the light streaks. Um, so you could think of it that way as um, we're filters. Um, mm -hmm. And we all, we're all different. So we're all different filters. Um, we all portray um, the same, the same thing. We're all portraying that street lamp um, or the street light. We're all portraying that, but it all comes out in different ways. And when you put different filters on it, it looks different. And that's important in the world because it comes into diversity. Because if you have eight point something billion different clones of each other, then you don't even need to talk to other people. It's like, oh, okay, if we're all the same, then I can talk to one person and I know that that person's the same as everyone else in the world. Yeah. And that's why I'm glad that God made us the way he did. And God made us in his own image. He also made us unique and unique to each one of us. Yeah. 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 And so the part about, you know, that you were just talking about um, differences between people. Yeah. I was just thinking to myself, um, ever since last year, and I don't think they're going to ever let go of this at any Elevation Youth event, is the importance of opening up your Bible. That was a huge part last year. This year, however, they challenged us with Bible reading clubs, and mostly so we can actually get in our word. But Pastor was mentioning how if you read it with different people, you're going to get different perspectives, right? Correct. And that's a cool thing that I liked them uh, to encourage because if you are to sit down and read the Bible on your own, you might not get everything. If you sit down with other people, you might not still not get everything, but you're going to get different perspectives on varying things, which is really cool that they encourage that this year. Yeah, and even Pastor Stephen, uh, when he gave his message, um, he was talking about how each individual uh, interprets the Bible differently. Now, does that mean that what they're saying is wrong? No. It's the way they interpret it. Yeah. Um, because I may say, um, like John 3.16, for instance, for God so loved the world. Okay, so I could interpret that and say, oh, well, he loves the world, like mm -hmm. uh, the world as a whole. Like that means he loves the people, he loves the plants, he loves uh, everything that goes on, the animals, the fish, um, the wildlife, uh, the water, everything like that. And uh, Ty could say, oh, well, God so loved the world. Oh, well, he's talking about just loving the people. Um, and then somebody else could say something completely different. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, like, what um, y'all are saying, obviously, I'm not going to get the same input from Pad that I'm going to get from Pastor Steven. They're going to both have different, differing takes on the Bible, and not that one of them is wrong, like you said. Both of them could be, you know, really good takes on the Bible. It just depends on the people you're with, and you need to find the right people that will hold you accountable. That's the main thing when you're getting in a Bible club. Yeah. 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 I thought that was actually pretty interesting this year that they encouraged that, because... I'm trying to figure out, like, okay, like, I want mine to be very exclusive and very particular. And I immediately thought, like, oh, maybe have, like, a balance of adult and kid, you know, because, or adult and youth. Because, you know, if you had all youth, it would be cool, but you wouldn't get the same perspectives, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. And I think, I think part of that is because of their experience or even leading back to maturity. Yeah. They've had like some of these leaders have had 30, 40 years plus on us of experience, whereas some of these leaders might have um, only 10 or 15 years. Yeah. Um, but either way, um, and you can put it into perspective, a 12-year-old versus an 18-year-old, 
you see how big of a difference a six year gap makes. Think about a twenty to a forty year difference. Yeah. It's a lot of knowledge, a lot of a lot of time to think about things, make mistakes, uh, and learn from those mistakes, which is important. Yeah. Yeah, and it's crazy to me because I always think like some people have the misconception that the older are always the wiser. And that is true most of the time. I will say that. But in, especially in like environments like this that they encourage us to do, that's why I thought to myself, oh, that's great if I have adults and youth because some things an adult will miss, the youth can get and bring that into life. And it, uh, both of those uh, perspectives can make something really nice and actually make everybody understand the word yeah yeah it's in my opinion it's all about experiences i mean like there could be a 20 and then a 30 year old the 20 year old might have been i don't know from family split up in his background you know he's been through a lot but the 30 year old you know might have lived with his parents for till he was off to college and then after college you know got his dream job and it's two Mm -hmm. different backgrounds so just depends on the experiences so yeah i mean you just gotta find the right people that's really it's really a personal thing honestly like you're no one can tell you who you need in your e-group or yeah. in your bible group but you yeah yeah so a little bit off topic with this stuff but um as we talked about battle x was kind of a disappointment in the series it was a big disappointment <laughs> to me dude yeah um yeah but out of all like the activity stuff, I feel like we actually got benefited this year compared to last. Uh, what did you, what was your guys' experience with the activity? Because you guys had a totally different one than me. Okay, like oh the, the, acti- yeah, the activity, the actual day. activity day. Yeah, yo, okay. that was so chill. Yeah, honestly, um, my experience with that because um, me and Ty went uh, and hung out different places and did different things. Um, when I got there, me and Ty, we went to a uh, picnic table and chilled for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was in the shade, so that was sort of just like a time to just subtly take in, oh, well, God made this. Yeah, Because um, yeah. it was at Can Creek Park, um, and it was on, I don't know if you'd call it a lake or just a big pond or whatever. Yeah, I would call it a big pond. <laughs> um, but it was on this body of water, and... You'd see, we saw some mallards, um, which are ducks, Yeah. to those of you who don't know the term. (laughs) Yeah, country Um, boy over here. um, (laughs) And then you'd look, you'd look at the trees and you'd see the birds just sitting on the branches, um, just being peaceful and uh, chirping, um, which is, it's, it's their harmony. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's soothing to go outside and just listen to birds. Yeah. Um, Because, and back back to the uh uh the clones i guess you could say is if birds were clones you wouldn't hear any different type of uh bird chirping it would all sound the same yeah because god god made birds to chirp differently that's that's how they communicate that's how they say uh stuff's going wrong or um they're that's that's how they sing essentially yeah uh that's that's the way that humans put it into perspective um and god made them to be beautiful like that um and then after we we sort of sat down um and looked at the scenery at the picnic table uh i walked up to the uh sports fields um, there was flag football going on, volleyball going on, but I hopped in at soccer. Um, and it was, it was really interesting, uh, to be able to play soccer cause I haven't done soccer in about two years. Um, so not that long, but at the same time, two years ago was kind of the first time that I really ever played on a team, um, for soccer. Um, so it hasn't really ever been my thing. Um, but just diversity in that, um, cause I met some people from Brazil, um, and they, they were speaking Portuguese. Um, they knew a little bit of English, um, and they were here for youth X, um, which is amazing because that shows that elevation has had an impact all across the world. Yeah. Not just, not just here. 
Because even though we think, oh, okay, well, it goes from North Carolina to Florida. That's not a big deal. Yeah. No, it goes from North Carolina to all over the country online. Mm-hmm. It goes to Canada. It mm-hmm. goes yeah. to Brazil. And it goes to Asia as well. Yeah. And probably some parts of Africa as well. So, yeah. So one of the cool things I get to do every Sunday, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but... um I serve on the Connections team at our Ballantyne campus, which is the broadcast campus. For those of y'all that don't know, that's where Pastor Stephen preaches in person. So we have, like, anywhere from, like, 200 to, like, I think the most we've had in one Sunday was, like, 460-something new guests. And they're from all over the globe. I mean, we'll see people who spent their last pennies, you know, trying to get here from... Like you said, Brazil, Asia, Europe. I mean, I've had people from all over. So it's really cool, and it's something I think we all kind of take for granted, us that live in the area. Like, hey, some people don't have as good access as we do to come to this church every Sunday. Yeah. And that's something that we can't take for granted. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's another thing. Um, It's we don't realize that going to church is a privilege it's not it's not even though in america it is a right Mm -hmm. um it is it's more of a privilege than a right um and across the globe it's a privilege not a right because in some of the middle eastern countries um or actually a lot of the middle eastern countries Mm -hmm. If you say that you are a Christian and you proclaim that you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you could possibly get killed. Either yeah. you and your family or you or your family. Um and it's and they still they still are strong to their faith. Mm-hmm. Uh which I don't believe that most Americans will ever understand. Um yeah. because we don't we don't have to deal with uh, being persecuted in that way, uh, we don't we don't deal with death threats like that every day for going to church. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And some of them, they even they even meet in homes, um, in different countries because their government is so strict, or um, maybe there's bad organizations uh, that are strict uh, that don't allow them to. Uh, of church uh, which is really sad but again we're very privileged and we shouldn't take it for granted like Todd was saying yeah yeah I always forget I mean I serve on the connections team with Tyler but I see this more with adults where we get a lot of outsiders but I always forget whenever we get to youth X there's always people from other countries this year we had this dude and I felt bad for him he looked like he was in middle school he apparently he was like a freshman I think you guys saw him I ended up carrying his bags. He was Canadian. He could barely speak any English. And he, his, I don't know how he got mixed up with us when he was supposed to be with the Orlando campus, but they got that all figured out. But I, even then, me trying to communicate with him, and I did an okay job with him. It was just interesting seeing him and interacting with him because I always forget, like, we have so many people from outside of the country. I know we have the Canada campus, and that's like, whatever, it's the Canada campus. But a lot of those guys speak English, and this dude didn't. He was a French Canadian, like more so French Canadian, because you know different parts of Canada have their yeah. dialects and everything. Mm-hmm. But then, like you guys said, you know Brazilians, and I didn't meet anybody outside of Canada this week. But in the past two, or I guess it's now three years, I have met people from around the globe, and it's crazy. It always amazes me. On Sunday, like you said, people spending their last pennies just to show up. Um, and then, you know, at Youth X, like these kids, even just kids throughout the United States who save up, or maybe their parents do, uh, like I had a friend, uh, from Texas, I actually, I think I had two that I knew, and I kind of hung out with them a little bit, um, but they were here for the first time ever for a Youth X in person, um, and there's, a, that was a story of a lot of these kids online that I got to meet, and it was like their first one ever, and they're all across the country, um, and it's always crazy to me to see that with these people. Yeah, 100%. I mean, kind of just to piggy, piggyback off of that. 
Uh, I got a little story. So, uh, probably about a year back, I want to say, maybe maybe it was this winter. Yeah, it was this winter when we did that. When we had that really, really, really big baptism day. Yeah, I remember that. So previously, I had met a lady from Florida, who um, she had gotten in a car accident with her friend. Um, mm-hmm. She was uh, driving under the influence. I'm not gonna name her name because obviously. Yeah. I don't have her permission for that, um, but she had, her friend had um, unfortunately passed away in the accident, and she came, she had started watching Elevation online, she saved up for years to come to Elevation, she yeah. made it here, and in the same Sunday, I saw her life change, she gave her life to Christ and got baptized in the exact same Sunday. Yeah. And I mean, it's just honestly beautiful to see what Elevation is doing in and throughout the community and in throughout the world, honestly, because it's just amazing. Like, that is something really only God can do. Yeah. I'll say this. Uh, so, like you said about baptisms, today, that was a huge part of tonight. And it's mm-hmm. always the last night of Youth X. The first year I was here, it was fine. It was whatever. It was kind of like this, but a little bit less. It was more showy, I think. Um, not like showy with the baptisms. I just think like the worship experience and the sermon itself. But also, like we said, there was middle schools. Last year, however, it was very interesting because you know we had a lot of people who legit got two hours of sleep. And that might sound bad, and it is, but a healthy youth ex, they say seven hours of sleep, that's not even fair. No, six we don't, isn't even. I would say like four to five. If you're getting six, you're, if you're getting four to five a night, you're set more than half set. the people here. Like, I'm not even gonna lie today, I was tripping off of like 500 milligrams of caffeine. Yeah, <laughs> caffeine is your bloodline here, and it always is, and it's crazy. Yeah. Like, I always back in her. I made the mistake my first year coming here. I did not bring any energy drinks. It was miserable, dude. Yeah. But tonight, however, like we said, it was a very intentional space. And shout out to e-group leader Isaiah because he gets, gets like, kind of like Pat, a lot of random kids that we've, like, never met. But especially him, they give him so many kids that he's never met. And I think a lot of those kids tonight, and some that we do know, like we know James, who got baptized tonight, but yeah, there were so many baptisms. And then even, I don't know if you guys saw this, I was walking around in the sanctuary after, like at like one part of the after party, I went back in to cool off, and I see that they're still doing baptisms, like two or three other kids, when they're trying to tear stuff down. And I'm like, you know, that's crazy. Like, that's cool that our church actually gives those kids that opportunity and invests in them and lets them know like this is what you're getting your like this is what baptism is do you want to do this and they're still like as they're trying to tear down the tanks they're like no we'll still do this like it's crazy to me um all the opportunities that they give our students here uh it's incredible but this year especially because of how it was set up i think i really got to see that with uh students and i think some other students who maybe like us have been here for a while or maybe you're new got to see that as well and see all that the church puts into because even something as simple as an activity like i don't know how pricey your guys's was i'm sure it was like a little bit pricey ours had to be pretty pricey like i went to like a small little kind of like mini theme park type deal with an arcade they gave us 40 dollars on each ticket and i don't know how many people were there but they had so many cards and i'm thinking to myself you got to pay for transportation, probably to rent the place out. Well, no, we didn't rent the place out, but all the reserve stuff, getting the catering there, and it's crazy, like, how much yeah. they pour into it. Time, money, effort. Um, somebody told me one time, YouthX is the biggest thing our church does, financially speaking, and, well, all, really, but especially financially. It's the biggest thing that they pour the tithing mm-hmm. money into, and it makes sense. Yeah, I mean... <clears throat> The reason that they um, pour that much money into YouthX is because, uh, like Pastor Stephen was talking about, um, he was saying that we are the next generation, and we are going to be the older kids and the old the adults one day, yeah. um, hopefully being able to be uh, 
either volunteers here or um, leaders here um, or something like that um, working for Elevation um, or even just volunteering again at Elevation. Um, and that's why they pour into us so much. Um, and they're not here to make money off of it. No. Um, because they don't make money off of it. Um, but again, we're very fortunate that we have the opportunity to be able to not only come to Elevation and come to UTEX, but we also have religious freedom, again, which leads back to what I was saying earlier, which a lot of other countries do not have. Yeah. Yeah. Even with what you were just saying about, like, making money, um, yeah, our leaders lose money, I think, because, like, they can't yeah. work. I mean, I know Pad works really hard, and he was really trying to get, um, is that our boy John? Look here, let me check. I wonder if it's John. So, that was not John, but um, probably just a random noise. Like I was saying, though, our group leaders lose so much money. Pad's a hard worker. Today, he was working. Every day he's been working, he's been getting business calls in. On, like, these short one-hour or less breaks that we get to come back to this hotel. But these leaders, like, not only do they lose money in that way of not working. Today, Pad, we saw him meet some random girl we've never met on this bus. And he was like, oh, it was a bet. And it's like just pad being pad, buying kids DoorDash, which who knows how much all this DoorDash costs, you know? I think it was like... It had some, to be well, well yeah, I, 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 It was it, some amount of money. It, it was, was a lot, bro. It was a good amount. Yeah. yeah, and even today, he blessed me. I look at my cash app when we get back up here because he's like, no, nah, I had to pay for the drinks that we got downstairs because something went wrong with the cards. And he doubled what I paid, and I was like, well, thanks, dude, like... You know, he's been doing that. I saw him the other day probably buy well over, like, $200 worth of merch for a bunch of kids. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, this is cool to see, like, people like this being generous. And, you know, every not every e-group leader can be, like, that financially generous. But I will say they're very, very generous of their time. I'd say every yeah. single one. And a lot of them actually do make an effort to do financial stuff for the kids. Yeah. Um, in whatever way. And it's really cool. Yeah. And to not really diverge from that but um i guess to uh piggyback off of that um they give a lot more than just their time um they give their time they may even be giving their money um some leaders mm -hmm. um some more than others um but it's it's not necessarily about uh if they're giving money or not or how much of their time they're giving to us um, because again, we have volunteers as well um, that they can't necessarily take off work, um, but it's the thought um, because they're trying to do what they can to help the next generation. Um, because there there's some volunteers that they may come for two or three hours a day um, and just volunteer and then go back home. Um, yeah. And they come back the next day and do a few more hours or something like mm -hmm. that. But in the end, it all leads back to the next generation, like Pastor Stephen was talking about. They want us to be as good as their generation when we get to that point, if not better. Yeah. Um, because they want us to be able to um, do this, what they're doing for us, for the next generation after us. Yeah. Yeah, the investment of everything, but you know, the group leaders themselves, the volunteers, I'm not I'm not like trying to discredit them. But of course they're not with us all the day. They do a lot actually, the volunteers do, and mm -hmm. they have a lot of behind the scenes stuff to oh, deal yeah. with, which is really, really cool. I met a uh, few um, volunteers earlier that were like, they said that they work from like eight something in the morning to yeah. like 12 30 at night yeah. oh my yeah dude yeah yeah it's crazy it's it's really crazy i met a volunteer here and i've seen her around my campus but i never really talked to her and it's crazy one? huh yeah and it's crazy to me like she's like yeah well my call time is like four and all she really 
does is like direct traffic for the buses. That's what she did. She did some other stuff, but even like getting to talk to some of the other leaders that I saw her doing that, talking to me and some probably some other youth here and there, like they get to sow like tinier seeds into them. But the e group leaders themselves show up because, like you said, uh, what Pastor Stephen was saying, they're believing in the next generation, and they really really care. Um, the first year I came here. Uh, I was in Michael's uh, e-group and <laughs> Michael's not here because he's on a 10 year anniversary trip which kind of sad but that's cool for him last year I was supposed to be in Isaiah's group but I ended up being in your guys' group and then I like fully put myself in your guys' group and through like time I ended up getting into you know Michael and Pat's group um, but that's because of investment you know and that's like for a lot of these kids like after youth x i think when we come back you know in august we see a lot of people from youth x show up for a little bit if they can you know if they work around their sports schedule but they show up because they met a leader at youth x and then that's how we get like 30 people in an e-group <laughs> but, yeah <laughs> yeah okay so i'm gonna ask a question that i've been kind of looking forward to hearing other people's opinion on okay what was y'all's favorite sermon I think I'm actually going to say, and I did not think this was going to be my favorite. I thought it was actually going to be my least favorite, was the podcast that they did. And I always love it when Pastor Steven's out there at YouthX, but when I heard it was going to be a podcast, I was like, I don't know about that. But it was late at night, like a little bit. It was late night service, but it wasn't super hyper. He had one moment where he stood up on the table and was hyper. And that lasted for like less than 10 seconds. Last year... It was just all hype at midnight, and I was like, bro, I want to go to bed. I'm, like, trying to live off the caffeine. This year is, like, a casual conversation, kind of like what we're doing. But it was, you know, uh, Pastor Steven, Holly, Graham, or, not, sorry, not Graham, Elijah, and JT, and they're there because, you know, Elijah and JT are the uh, hosts of Youth Nation. And they just did a podcast they took only three questions which were you know from people that the church probably chose um from the audience but they did probably like 50 or 60 minutes of just talking and there was like little things that they talked about they got to hit a lot of different topics and points mm -hmm. and like you're saying with the substance abuse that was what they were talking about a big part of um and they had an interesting way of approaching that where like it was like don't judge people if you drink like we're not going to judge you you know we're just saying recognize what you struggle with and try to avoid that because even pastor steve was like i'm addicted to diet coke i'm like who cares that i don't drink i have anger issues already on the road you know there's stuff like that it was stuff like even dating but you know it's one thing when people hit dating at a youth camp but this year i think they hit it in a different way and i can't even remember everything that they were saying about dating but it was more like oh it was find somebody that you want to be your like best friend in life yeah which is something i have crazy that i haven't heard that i know that as one of my values mm -hmm. but to hear that getting told to people and people uh mostly pastor steven saying to the girls but also the guys somewhat to know your worth and not compromise was cool and then other stuff that they just kind of hit all over the place it was it was unexpected uh for me to enjoy it that much yeah yeah i mean so my favorite sermon um and it was it wasn't necessarily the whole sermon but it was part of a sermon um and it was it was about dropping your stone mm -hmm. um and essentially it's about letting things go um because if if you're holding a stone or a big rock in your hands then you can't do other stuff with your hands meaning you can't do stuff for yourself and you can't help others um so if if somebody think about it this way if you get an argument with somebody um in some cases with your spouse in some cases with your parents or someone like that um think of it as um the rock is that burden of uh i don't like arguing but I'm mad at them right now because this didn't go the way I wanted it to. So yeah. that's a rock. And they just keep piling up. The rocks can keep piling up. And it gets too much to carry. But even at one rock, 
you're carrying you might be carrying it with both hands and that rock is preventing you from helping others and it's preventing you from living your normal everyday life so he was saying that we just need to drop those rocks or those stones and let them go because the easiest thing to do in life is to ball up your fist and sometimes you just gotta uncurl your fist and let things go because in most cases most things most situations like that aren't gonna matter in a day or two much less like in maybe some serious cases they're not gonna matter in a week um so it's it's important um and that that really helped me um and it's it's important that we let things go um again not just for ourselves but for others as well and that that helped me a lot yeah um so that's crazy because so it was actually earlier in that sermon that was my favorite it was my favorite sermon. That was my favorite sermon. But earlier, the earlier parts were the best part of it to me when he was talking about the difference between grace and uh, truth. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, it's crazy. Because grace without truth, like, you could just be trying to be liked. Like, you know, you're nice to people, all that stuff. But, like, you're wishy washy. Are, are, you, yeah. are you doing it because you just want to be a nice person? Or are you doing it because you want to be liked by everybody? Yeah. Then again, if you're just a truthful person, you're gonna be rude and stuck up in your beliefs. Yeah. So you gotta have a good compromise of both, which is kind of eye-opening to me, and it helps me like think of the way I act to people and the way I respond to people in different ways. Yeah. Yeah, I like that sermon a lot. And something interesting that he briefly pointed out, he kind of made a little bit of a deal of it. But I've never heard this been said um, about the story of the woman at the well. Because that's what it was based on. Mm-hmm. And we've heard that story been preached on so many times. But, which isn't a bad thing. It's great when they point out something new. And something yeah. that he did point out that was new, yeah. What to me at least, was Jesus had to get onto her level as he bowed, or not bowed down, but like knelt down to her level to draw in the sand. Yeah. And it was like he's meeting us where we are at our lowest points is what he was trying to make the uh, argument of and then you know he gets a or i don't i don't know if the scriptures say he gets up but he tells him you know first one or whoever has not sinned throw the first stone and yeah. everybody just walks one by one and then he made the point about the younger generations just watch the older generations because the older generation is supposed to know it's up but they're just following traditions um but the point of jesus getting onto her level was really interesting to me that that was a very close second for me as my favorite sermon. I thought that was really good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will say something that um, I was kind of aware of, but I think what today's the twelfth now that we're recording, but the eleventh was yesterday. Um, I think it was like the tenth, maybe the first day here. I realized. Oh, I had, or actually, I guess a week ago, I was planning for uploads on this channel and podcast and whatever to stay consistent. And one of those was going to be the one year thing about this thing being made and all that we could do. And today, or I guess the 11th, I realized, oh, this is like one year ago today, I made this thing uh, because of Youth X 23. Um, and it was weird because, I mean, I didn't hear the sermons at Youth X 23 the day that I made the channel or whatever. I just got home and I had the time to, but today they were talking a lot about, um, uh, being a preacher to your friends. And it's not even like you need the occupation of a pastor. It's just being a light to your friends and everybody. Yeah. And it was very interesting because like we talked about the worship today. Um, it's been a very interesting week for me because I've been able to actually do what I see our youth pastors like John or Pad, you know, do, which is like pray over people and actually invest time into them. Um, and 
now the challenges you know when I get home is following up but it's crazy because they were talking about how God always sees you as a big thing also this year and I heard some other people saying like they've seen over this week some connections being made of like either across days or a lot of time um do you guys have any connections that you guys uh it's fine if you guys don't but even if it's like as far as what like if something was mentioned one day or maybe something was on your mind and they like addressed it or something like that okay uh so the first day i don't remember exactly what the pastor was talking about um i wasn't really i wasn't locked (laughs) in the first day i'm gonna be honest i was not locked in yeah but I remember he was kind of like, I don't remember what he said, but I remember the way it made me feel. It made me feel like kind of conflicted about the way I've been acting. Mm-hmm. And then earlier today, or well, yesterday at the time of the recording, um, the lady, she was talking about, you know, being a pastor and, um, you know, to your friends and your family and the people around you. And it brought me back to an old sermon, uh, a guest preacher preached at uh elevation where they were talking about you might they say you might be the only jesus people see yeah and if you don't kind of portray him to them and if you aren't actively with with most people that you meet oh everybody that you meet honestly if you aren't trying to show them the way to the lord and you know uh trying to bring them closer to god and save them then they might not ever get that again. Yeah. That's yeah, fair. I agree. Um, I have a story uh, to go along with that um, because about the the part that you were saying, Ty, um, about people, uh, we might be the only um, light uh, of Jesus that people ever see. Um, so when I was really young, um, I think I was about nine or ten years old. Um, one of my neighbors uh, down the street a little ways, um, she wasn't she she wasn't a Christian, um, but she was sort of trying to learn more um, because she wasn't really religious at all. Um, she was just sort of one of those people that's like, I'm living life. I'm gonna see what happens uh, after death. Um, cause she, she wasn't really sure. And, um, at that time I was, it's, it's sad to say for me, but when I was younger, I was a lot more, um, evangelistic than I am now. Um, and outgoing in my faith than I am now. Um, because anytime somebody would, uh, or I would see somebody like some worker would come to the house to do something. I'd say, hey, do you know Jesus? Um, yeah. And not just do you know Jesus, because there's a lot of faiths that say, oh yeah, I know Jesus, but they don't they don't know him like that. Um, yeah. And I say, do you go to church? Stuff like that. Uh, try try to get to know them and um, to see if they'd like to come to my church. Um, but anyway, back to the story. Um, so my neighbor. I invited her, actually me and my mom invited her uh, to church one day, um, and we had no idea anything really about her life. Um, Her and her husband, they live together um, down the street, not too far from us, and we gave them cookies ever so often because they weren't old couple, but at the time they were were in their 60s, so they weren't old. they were older, like than me, obviously. Um, but the husband um, didn't really show interest in going to church, um, so she came by herself, and we didn't know that she was going to come to church because it's as Christians, it's our job. Um, well, actually, it's not even our job. Um, well, it's our job to plant the seed, um, and the Holy Spirit does the rest. Yeah, He's the one that gives them that feeling, oh, I should go to church. I, I feel like there's something more that I need to know. So I feel like that's what the Holy Spirit did with her 
um, because we invited her to church, which was planting the seed, and the Holy Spirit is the one that brought her to church, um, or mm -hmm. gave her the thought of, oh yeah, I'll come to church, uh, try it out one Sunday. So, again, we didn't know that uh, she was going to come to church, because um, I had talked to people before, and they never really showed up to church. Yeah. Um, so I didn't, I didn't really have um, much confidence that she was going to show up. Um, but I mean, of course, I hoped she would, um, because she could learn a lot um, and possibly get saved. Um, and she she came in, sat in the back row. And of course, I didn't. We didn't notice her, um, or we weren't able to see her. Um, that like she came to church till end of church service and everything, and we saw her in the back row sitting by herself, um, like on the pew with different people, but by yeah. herself. Um, and so our family went up to her and said, "Hey, how are you?" Like, and everything like that. And uh, she said that. Um, it was it was very impactful, um, and she said that uh, she had a lot of thinking to do about um, about church and everything like that, and about the Lord and everything. Um, needless to say, um, we didn't. Um, well, me and my mom or any of my family members didn't go. We didn't see her um, after that. Um, because about a week later, um, we found out that she passed away from cancer. Um, and we didn't know that she had cancer, um, when we invited her to church. We didn't know anything about her life, like I was saying earlier. We didn't know that she had cancer, which I was alluding to. Um, and we didn't know, like, um, necessarily what her and her husband, um, uh, relationship religiously was like or anything like that um, but it it gave me some thought it was like wow so I I don't want to take credit for planting seed because it feels wrong because it was the Holy Spirit that allowed me to say or allowed me to go down there and say hey do you want to come to church yeah um, and I don't know I I hope she's in heaven um, yeah. and I, I truly think she is because um, she seemed very very interested um, and she wasn't one of those people that would lie to you and say oh yeah yeah I'm interested yeah, uh, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll think about it or something like that if she says she was interested she was interested about it um, but we never saw her again after church um from from that day till now um and it it gave me that thought it's like so was i the last person that interacted with or interacted with her on a religious level and uh got to talk to her about god um and leading back to what i was saying you might just be um the only um, reflection of Jesus that somebody will ever see, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and that's what that that's what I'm alluding to is that story because to me that's exactly what that means to me because I I believe that I was the last one. Um, I mean I I'm not a hundred percent sure that I was, um, but I. I believe if I wasn't the last one, I might have been one of the last people to ever uh, show her Jesus. So that's that's a very important thing. Yeah, yeah. and it, I mean that just goes back to prove, like you never know what's God, what God's gonna do through you or through someone that you meet. Like yeah. there can be people that you meet that will have you don't know them at all, but they will have a crazy impact on your life. Yeah, yeah, like. I mean, I'm be honest. I didn't really know Peyton all that well until like just recently we started becoming closer and closer friends. Yeah. And I mean, he's had a crazy impact on my life. Like you know, he's always there for me, always praying for me, and all that stuff. Always reaching out on holidays too. <laughs> like Happy Easter, dude. Like those. Like 
Low key, that's like makes some of the holidays for me. Yeah. Well, and another thing to it is, it's the little things. Mm-hmm. Um, because something that's uh, little to you might be might make somebody's day or maybe make even their week. Um, just by, for instance, our bus driver. Yeah, like, dude. That might make his whole month just by saying. Hey, Mr. Mike, just saying, just yeah. saying, hey, every morning when we get on the bus, when we get on the off the bus, giving him respect, um, especially like I don't I don't know if he's a Christian or not, but mm-hmm. I believe that we have showed him Jesus. Yeah, um, definitely. 100%. A lot of people on our bus have showed him Jesus because he knows that we're a church organization um, or we're we're part of a church. And. We say hi to him every morning. We yeah. respect him, and we do our best to show him Jesus. Um, and we make him we make him feel good and everything like that by doing chants and whatever. Yeah, yeah. And he, uh, Mr. Mike's the best driver and yeah. whatever. Um, but it it might be something so simple to you, yeah. but it might be the biggest thing for somebody else. Yeah. So, and another thing is words and actions. Um, not too long ago, um, I was I was going through, um, and it, it was like an orientation uh, into something um, about like um, learning a bunch of life lessons, um, and it said, "Think before you speak, mm-hmm. and think before you do," which again, as you get older, you you realize that more. Yeah. Um, because before we spoke to Mr. Mike, we were thinking, well, or we might not have been thinking at all um, of how it would impact him. Yeah. We could have been like, oh, okay, he's just, he's a bus driver. Yeah. Like, on the first day, we might have been like, okay, taking a picture with him might make him feel good. Yeah. And whatever. It, it's cool. It's, it might be funny. But now, we're going to take a picture with him uh, I guess this morning, yeah. later this morning, um, yeah. because he made an impact on us. Yeah. And just by being the guy that he was and being kind to us and everything like that. Um, and I, to me, I mean, in the most subtle way possible, I think that he showed us Jesus. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, he's over here. He's being, he's one of the most friendly people I met at Youth X because, yeah. you know, he's always, yeah. like, I was talking to him when I got on the bus. I was the yeah. first one on the bus yeah. after uh, the after party tonight. Yeah. And me and him were just chatting it up. You know, he was being friendly. He was, you know, we were just chatting it up about, like, the church, how he used to go to church camps when he was a kid. Yeah. Uh, they weren't quite as big as this, he yeah. said, but, you know. Yeah. But, in my opinion, it's all about words and actions they have more consequences than some people think like and consequences meaning results because yeah. um a lot of young people think that consequence means oh something Bad, bad's yeah. going to happen which that's not the case consequence just means the result of something like the consequence of uh me giving a homeless person a dollar or some money mm-hmm. might um, might result in them being happy or being able to eat. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. In that case, it would be good. So yeah. the word consequence, oftentimes when people say that around uh, the younger people, um, they say it when it's meant in bad terms or uh, bad conversations. Um, and that's where I think they get um, confused. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, back to what you were saying. Yeah, uh, but um, basically they have more consequences than you would think. Like when I was a kid, my mom always taught me like one of the biggest things she taught me was like to always smile and wave at people. Mm-hmm. And I remember I would always do that as a kid and no one would really smile and wave back. And I mean, yeah. it didn't really affect me at the time because you know I was just a kid but when we moved into the neighborhood I'm living in right now 
I remember I smiled and I waved at this one dude. Like, literally, we were going to look at the house. This, like, just a little viewing. And they smiled and waved back. And I just remember being so excited. I was like, Mom, 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 he waved back. Yeah. And it's just, like, the littlest things, like, even just a little smile and wave can make someone's day or make someone's afternoon. And yeah. you never know what the person, uh, like, walking on the sidewalk next to you is going through. Like, yeah, yeah. They could have just gotten fired from their job or something. Something could have happened in their life, and maybe all they need right now is just a smile and a wave. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot to unpack there. Um, firstly, though, with Mr. Michael, I think it's so interesting. I have actually never had a bad bus driver at UthX. Even last year, it was rough. Our bus driver actually pushed through. Yeah. really hard for us and said he did not care about the union hour thing because we were like 15 20 minutes in yeah, Florida traffic yeah. and he pushed through and, and and that's another thing that people don't realize is that the hours that they work yeah um that could get that could have possibly gotten our driver last year fired yeah. um because it's the same as a trucker um you have those personal uh, use of your rig while you're on technically on the job um, but there's personal use which is about five ten minutes mm -hmm. um, and then there's work use which um, in most cases you're not allowed to drive more than 12 hours um, at a time whether it's um, uh, a semi um, or an 18 wheeler or um, a tour bus like these um, and so that could have gotten our bus driver fired but in that case it was his selflessness yeah yeah but like Mr. Michael is here being we are being nice to him he was already nice enough but impacts like that like I could see tonight I thought he was actually going to cry but he held it in I could see him holding back his yeah time I could too when he was talking yeah. to us yeah and you could see people in our bus, even the adults, yeah. seeing the impact he's had on us kids. Yeah. And it's just by being friendly. And we've had an impact on him. He's had an impact on us. And it's like these small little encounters like that yeah. are crazy. Um, I have two stories with that. One actually happened here. And the other kind of relates to you with uh, holidays and me texting you. I text. I try to text everybody in my thing about holidays. But this year on my birthday, I don't really, I have a lot of mixed opinions on my birthday. I used to not really care for it. And I say I don't care for it now. I kind of do. I kind of don't. I don't know. It just depends. This year, however, I was kind of disappointed and sad. There's some, there's been tension, I think, with me and my friends lately. And I could even get to that in a little bit. But... I didn't get anything from anybody, like any birthday text or whatever, and I'm like, okay, whatever. But the first text, the first text I woke up to, and I woke up late because I mean it's summer. Yeah. Seven in the morning, this girl from Elevation, who's online, who I barely talk to, I have a very, like, acquaintance of relationship. She texts me happy birthday, and I'm like, I haven't like done anything about this right i haven't said that anybody that it was my birthday half of the people she was a, she's in student leadership with me none of them remembered in our group chat and she didn't even reach out in the group chat she reached out personally to me and of course my parents remembered uh thankfully which i don't take for granted actually i've sadly seen my friends say that their parents forget um but then later that day my parents have been kind of strict on me about social media but they know that i'm about to be an adult so they let me get instagram first post i make if you look at my page it is about my birthday and then magically these people blow up my inbox about the birthday and it made me realize like i try to not have an ego and i know it's like life's not about me even my birthday but it made me sad like all right whatever but that one interaction with that one person, it was it was really interesting and special to me. 
because it's somebody that I don't even really talk to, but she's had an impact on my life with some of the things that she's done, and I know I've had it somewhat of an impact on hers, but we don't even have that like serious of exchanges. Even this week at UFX, I saw her a few times. I hugged her. I said hi to her. Whatever. I didn't really hang out with her. But even like I I know that I've had some of an impact on her because the other day I posted or yeah yesterday. I posted about one year of the ministry, and she's like, that's incredible. And I know that she watches my stuff, and she'll probably be listening to this. So shout out to Sophia, because she's been there for me. Even though it's, like, so small, it means a lot, like you guys were mm-hmm. saying. And that's what we had with Mr. Michael, and that's really cool to me. Or somebody like, I won't name her name, but the, the blonde girl that was the volunteer that I met. I didn't even realize it really in the moment. I was kind of trailing with Pad. Uh, cause I like to hang out with Pat sometimes and I was, you know, kind of just jumping around from a lot of different people that I know here, but this blonde girl who's like, I don't know, a few years out of college, maybe one or two is actually invested in me and talking to me and Pat pointed that out to me later and made me realize like little interactions like that are very meaningful to me. And I'm sure they are to you guys, like we've been talking about and when we get to pour into people, it's really special because seeing that with Mr. Michael is probably the biggest example I've seen in recent memory mm-hmm. of making an impact on somebody. Uh, and it was just really cool. Like, that's not what I expected out of youth X. I didn't expect to, you know, be friends with a bus driver. Mm, yeah. Um, that w- I didn't even think about transportation, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's become a huge part and yeah. I don't know how it is on the other buses. Yeah. I'm sure it's not like that, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, there's no I, way. Because I think a lot of these people, and, you know, it's okay. You know, people have different outlooks on life. They take that for granted. I know the leaders don't because yeah. they understand this. Yeah. But also, I think we have that experience of last year, and we understand that. Yeah. And even this year, it doesn't matter if it's five minutes down the road. We're still trying to make him feel special, and he makes us feel special. You know? Yeah, yeah. And even even back to what you were saying earlier about um, like the the smallest um, like the smile and wave thing you were saying, Ty. Um, to me, Mister Mike, because every morning when we walk on the bus, um, me and I know at least Ty, um, we both say hi to Mister Mike. He smiles at us, and we both shake his hand. Yeah. Um, because I feel like, for me personally, the handshaking uh, is just respect. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. it's just respect. Um, and that's that's a big part of it too. Is if you respect somebody, they'll respect you back in most cases. Um. And Mr. Mike, when he smiles, it's like. I don't know how to explain it. It just like it makes my day because yeah. I've there was actually times I'm not sure if it was yesterday or the day before, mm-hmm. um, but I was I think we were about to hop on the bus and I was like, yeah, let's go see Mr. Mike. Yeah. We get to see Mr. Mike smile. Yeah. We get to yeah. shake Mr. Mike's hand and see how his day's going. Yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Like he makes our day. Yeah, and I'm sure he doesn't even realize that. Yeah. Like he he probably doesn't realize that he's making some teenager's day just by smiling and shaking yeah. our hand. Yeah, yeah. Me and Pat or me and Tyler here have this guy on connections. His name is Norman, and I'm sure you've actually seen him. You probably haven't noticed him. You know who he yeah, is? Yeah, yeah. Dude, this year <laughs> Isaiah's E group was so disappointed. They were so so disappointed. I think they like their new guy, but they were so disappointed because Norman had a huge impact on them. And yeah. from me and Tyler's experience with Norman, and I'm probably sure oh. yours too, he's really quiet. Oh, yeah. But he can be very intentional, and it's yeah. really cool. Yeah. And, you know, his kids are in our, or his kid and his brother are in our E group, and it's really, really cool. Um, seeing even like his impact on a lot of people at our church um, to the point where I saw him repost something on Instagram about how his wife's like writing a book. And. I'm like, yeah, I would love to financially support that. Of course, dude. And it's like those little interactions. It's kind of like with Sophia with Norman. 
but Norman, like, you know, Sophia's online, Norman's in person. I can say hi to him every other Sunday, but I don't spend a whole lot of time with Norman because he has different responsibilities. <laughs> but, yeah, I think it was really incredible, not just for us, but a lot of other people, I think, saw that. Maybe even some of the girls saw that, especially tonight, I'm sure, on our bus of, like, the impact. And they might not even think about it that much, but it's something that will stick with me out yeah. of all the Youth X memories, which is crazy to me. I mean, um, it's not often... Like, in my past memories with most, with most of the bus drivers I've ever had, like, I've had lots of bus drivers in my life. It would be, like, yeah. school bus drivers, um, sports bus drivers, youth ex drivers. Yeah. Honestly, last year's youth ex driver, I didn't, like, I didn't say a word to them. And yeah. I, I regret it now, looking back on it, because... Obviously, you know, we've been talking to Mr. Mike and we've been, you know, mm -hmm. uh, making him smile and all that stuff, which, um, I mean, great and all, but making other people happy also, it has an impact on you as well. Like, yeah. seeing him get up there at tonight and holding in tears, it's not often that you see bus drivers do that. Yeah, or yeah. guy for his age. Like, you know, yeah. that like that broke me like I was like wow this is yeah. amazing like and that just kind of also shows the impact the impact the church has because like yeah dude. we we are showing we are literally showing him Christ like the whole bus on, yeah. in my opinion all of us just even all of us just being encouraging and stuff yeah. like the leaders and stuff you know everyone thinking him like yeah that is like it's not even that big of a thing, but we're showing him encouragement and we're showing him what the love of God looks like. Yeah. Which is very impactful to people. Yeah. Yeah, and it's kind of like the mission of our church, especially. Mm -hmm. And it's the mission of all churches. See what God can do through you. Yeah, see what God can do through you. Um, and that means you as an individual, but that could even mean like the person over there that you can see what God, what God is doing through their life. Mm -hmm. Mostly it's individual, you know, to work on yourself. But you can especially see it as stuff like this. Um, but, yeah, that that was just wild to me, uh, Mr. Michael being like that. And I had one other bus driver. I, I don't – did you guys get Mr. Michael for your activity bus or no? Mm, yes, yeah. we did. You we guys did? did? Oh, yes. you guys are lucky. Yeah. So we got somebody else, and, like, they were whatever – but they weren't Mr. Michael. And I, I could tell that. Yeah. You know. Um, so it, it was just a really interesting time with that. Um, and, yeah. Um, I will say food was actually good this year. Last year it was really disappointing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Yo, I've food. been, been low-key tired of food this week for some reason. I think it might be the lack of sleep and the... Yeah. Over dosage of caffeine. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> but like it's like I'm hungry throughout the day. But the moment I start eating, it's I'm like, like done. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't want to eat anymore. Yeah. Yeah. But uh yeah, the food was good this year. Yeah, um, it actually was. What are some of the things uh that you thought we did better and some of the things that we thought weren't as good as last year? I will say Something we did way better this year is the amount of time you could spend with your friends in free time. And some of that, especially today, was a little bit whack and weird because they were trying to figure out when services would start. That was you know, their own technical issue, but other than today, it was pretty much perfect with that. It's where it wasn't like too much time. I felt like today kind of dragged, but I don't know. Maybe it was because I was tired. Um, yeah, but it is. It is like the third like day or something. Trust me. But the one thing I think they could have maybe improved on, and maybe it's because of our room situation and everything, is e group time. Mm -hmm. But also at the same time, it was kind of cool to have way less because it gave us moments to reflect on it individually or go and talk to like a friend about it. Yeah. Um, and just think on your own time or just go up to your leader at the after party and talk or whatever you wanted to do. Um, last year, they way overkilled that. And e-groups were ending early just to try to get into swimsuits to get to the pool, you know, on that one day. And they way overkilled our e-group time. Mm -hmm. And we get e-group every week, which is cool. Um, 
so I wasn't like a huge like I was like huh I think we've maybe spent 30 40 minutes in e-group over four days and tomorrow we'll probably spend like 15 20 again but you learn a lot more I think when we're like writing notes or just actually taking stuff into practice in our lives um, so it was kind of weird there um, mm -hmm. food was an improvement mostly um, I will say communication with teams and what to do with the staff people needs to I mean there's always room for improvement there but like I had an actual thing that we can experience um, the only thing I think I would, Mm -hmm. the only thing I think I would want more of is Battle X I thought that was kind of weird this year it wasn't bad but it was just very different and I don't think it benefited anybody so to short. just being like two hours as a grand it event it was an hour and a half an hour and a half as a grand event and then just totally screwing over all the points overriding literally everything to the point where the little recap said it was scripted this swap one and it's like, dude, we went from second place to last place. How does that make sense? When we had no competition throughout the day. Yeah. Um, oh, you know what the one thing could be improved? And this might just be a problem because of our location was seating. Some of the days we had people in the wild going into like other teams like the pound because we needed a place to sit. And it wasn't just like two or three. It was like 20 or 40 kids mm -hmm. and leaders, you know, included uh, yeah. in those sections. But yeah, what, what would you say? Cause I think uh, Jacob, or not Jacob. Oh my gosh, Luke. <laughs> Jacob's Jacob's think, in the other room. I think he fell asleep. Yeah, I think Luke uh, passed out. He talked a lot today, so that was cool. Yeah. And it's He's three ten in the morning. It is so. three ten in the morning. Shoot. Uh, yeah, but I would say um, one thing that I definitely thought was better this year than last year was honestly worship like we were mm -hmm. talking about it yeah. earlier it's a lot more of a vulnerable place when you can get up close to it's not like being close to the stage a lot of people are like oh it's a good view or oh, you can hear better yeah. no it's like something about being that close and connected with the people that are like pouring into mm -hmm. you it's kind of magical to me honestly because it's like i was like down, i was down on my knees like this mm -hmm. earlier tonight um, yeah, it was just like, yeah, wow. I, I increased steps, killed calories tonight in a short three hour span by running all over the place, you know, trying to pray over this person, that person, be there for this person. Even prior to today, I got to pray over some people that I know. Uh, I got to pray over one of our leaders today, um, leaders, you yeah. know, which I didn't think that was going to happen. Um, but they needed it and it was very interesting because I looked around the room and there was a lot more I think it wasn't like a large large amount but there were a lot of uh, leaders or students praying over some leaders it was like some definitely those students and students that was a huge part this yeah. year which was cool and you know we had our hype songs but they actually balanced it out this year with calm worship um that can be turned into an anthem, you know, and something super loud and fun. Uh, so that was a great improvement. Yeah. Um, one thing that I thought was really cool, I'm not going to name her name, um, but one of the girls from my school, um, she goes to church here. Hmm. I saw a completely different side of her today. I saw her praying over these uh, two people and like, I haven't seen that side of her from like a student standpoint I haven't seen that side of her and yeah. I mean one thing is like obviously church camp kids are gonna be a little bit more you know Bold, open yeah. with their relationship with God but honestly I think this year we did a better job of making it to where I don't know I feel like the kids are going to take it into practice more. They're going to go out in their schools. They're going to start making a difference, making a change, mm -hmm. and spreading God's word. Yeah, I, I actually saw somebody from my school that I was surprised he was here. And he wasn't here for Youth X, actually. I, I think he was here, or like as a student, or not even a leader. He was like, a, like some third-party service or whatever to come in and help prepare stuff. 
but like I said, they had baptisms at the, like during the after party that people didn't even get to see. I'm pretty sure his like brother got baptized here by mm. his father. So, and he's not like somebody I think would go to church at all. And I saw him here, and it wasn't like he was worshiping. He was just like serving our church. Maybe that's because of his job is what I thought. Like, oh, whatever. But then when I saw that time, I was like, oh, that's like really interesting. Um, but like you said, they they created a space definitely this year for people to be themselves and vulnerable and um, open. <laughs> definitely. So obviously, youth camp is a lot about connections and meeting new people, mm-hmm. and you know, kind of getting out of your comfort zone. What are some connections that kind of surprised you this week? Hmm. I I feel like I had a kind of healthy balance of like brand new connections with people I've never met, and then these people that I've kind of met before, you know, but I've actually gotten to grow with them a bit. I will say, um, I can say I've met all of Pastor Steven's kids to some varying degrees. I met Abby very briefly, um, very nice person to see. She's always full of joy and I see her around her. Super cool mm-hmm. to see one of my student leadership friends be there for her as like a mom or like some supporting figure when, you know, I mean, of course her mom is present, but yeah, you know, something like UFX. Like she's kind of like the e-group leader mom type deal is uh-huh. my friend for Abby. And so since I was hanging out with them, I got to see her for a little bit. And she was nice. And I talked to her like very briefly. Mm-hmm. But that was an interesting thing. I didn't really think that I was going to talk to any of the furry kids or any pastor kids. I even talked to uh, Pastor LB's kid, kind of, kind of. Um, mm-hmm. And he prayed over me a little bit today, which I thought was interesting. So, pastor kid relations was very interesting this year for me. Um, the blonde girl who was like out of college was very interesting. Yeah. Um, those two really surprised me. Of course, Mr. Michael surprised me. Um, and some of the guys in our group that are just brand new and I'll probably never see again. Very interesting to me uh, to get to bond with them. Um, and then some of my friends that I've seen on student leadership online you just get to see them um even somebody that you met that i'm not going to name they were in student leadership and they i've seen them around but they're like very reserved and Mm -hmm. they i wasn't with you guys the whole time but when i was i could see like the person was a little bit more open and i didn't really talk a whole whole lot but i was like oh that's interesting i get to see like a different side of people and even tonight when i was worshiping like some isaiah's dudes were open and vulnerable um so some of those like very even if it wasn't like a lot of verbal connection Mm -hmm. there was something there right yeah um even the two two girls that i met on the bus one today or both today i guess one was very joking i guess both were very jokingly and then the girl that we were with in the lobby because she was waiting on food like those three girls on our bus probably never gonna see those people again but they were yeah. cool to interact with. Um, so, like, a lot of, like, small, you know, few-minute interactions with people that were really cool. Yeah, honestly. What about you? Um, so, definitely, I'm going to say Mr. Mike was obviously one of them. Yeah. Love Mr. Mike. Mr. Mike on top, for real. Best bus driver here. Shout out Seriously. to Mr. Mike. Um, but also, the security guard. He, I don't know if you oh, had, like, yes, a sit-down conversation with him, but... He was so he patrols the halls like all night uh, for the people on our podcast. He's like he he's here all night like um, eleven thirty to like six I think. Yeah, and I'll give a brief history on this. YouthX I think is in is very infamous. This is a huge improvement this year on security. I don't know how it is at the other hotels, but it's infamous for terrible security. Uh, the first time I went twenty twenty two, they relied on uh, e group leaders to be security. <laughs> Uh, last year you could just dap up the security and go to the girls tower if you wanted because we were at a resort like you could literally do whatever the only real thing you had to worry about was a strict e-group leader and waking them up but a lot happened and we're not going to get inside this year however like you're saying and you're going to continue he will find you if you leave your room yeah he's like a hawk dude and we got four floors I know that's like dense and everything 
but he's chill. I met him and I've become a little bit closer with him. And it's it's cool, dude. I hope he comes back because he is a cool dude and he has cool relationships with us. Yeah, and one thing that kind of struck me as different from most like security guards, like most like, you see security guards mean, tough, mm-hmm. you know, strong guys. You know, that's what they're supposed to be. Yeah. You know, obviously, and this dude. He's mean strong. stuff yeah, he's, strong he's guy built. he's like if built. i saw him and i'm like a bad person outside i see him i'm not coming in no, no i'm I'm leaving no. right away um but he was out there in the hall and my boy luke he's like yo you just want to chill and talk to the security guard for a little bit yeah and yeah. i'm like yeah sure i'm down so we go and we're like yo you just want to talk for a little bit we can't sleep and he's like yeah sure because he we talked for like two hours, dude, yeah, just bro. about random stuff, anything under the moon, and it's just really cool to be able to have conversa- conversations with people you just met, and kind of get into like some deeper topics. Yeah. And especially like, obviously, yes, this was a church camp, but he doesn't have anything to do with our church, and he still kind of spoke to me. Yeah, so it's amazing, definitely. like when you're in like a an environment and you're constantly surrounded by the word of God you're more vulnerable to hearing him even in just random conversations yeah yeah it is crazy how our church I've seen through the past three years here very even at rhythm nights but like not a little bit less there mostly because this is such like it's like every single day you're living this out for a few days mm-hmm. it's really cool to see the interactions with people but this year in particular I think it's just because of how everything was set up on a structured basis like i don't think they planned for security guards to be bonding with people like no they didn't definitely not. but this year we had a lot of cool interactions with, like staff people even the people at the kiosk a little bit um out front like really interesting interactions even something i thought about i think luke mentioned this a little bit earlier about the diversity and you know we all have our teams here but even you, i think you were in the elevator yeah you were in the elevator with me and there's these two girls who I kind of know, but not really. I just know them like by name, kind of. But one of them went to Cuperson, and she kind of said this in like a offhand joke, like, oh, you go to park with we're like mortal enemies. But she was like, I'm a brother and sister in Christ. And then she got off the elevator with her friend. And I was like, you know, even like small interactions like that, like, yes, we're mortal enemies throughout the entire school year or oh, whatever. Yeah, 100%. It's like, you know, that's not really like super serious to anybody you know and it's like small interactions like that that was really cool yeah i mean like my thing is like okay so take for example your friend you were talking about from your student leadership Mm -hmm. like i met her a while back but we hung out for like maybe 30 minutes and a line for a food truck at one of the rhythm nights who sophia uh no uh oh okay, okay yeah yeah and i yeah. saw her i saw her here the other day i i reached out to her I was like yo what's up and we talked for a second and then we just we just been hanging out the rest of the trip and like honestly like, yeah. that kind of came out of nowhere and it's crazy like the different people god can put in your life and it really is like the impact they can have on you even just in a few days like yeah it's crazy what he can do <laughs> yeah <laughs> if dude. you just if you just open your heart to him and put faith in God, he's going to put the right people in the right, and he's going to put you in the right situations yeah. to succeed. Yeah, dude. I've had so many cool little things like that. Like, I didn't, I didn't like, bond with some, like, guy or girl like that over this time, um, which I am happy about because last year that ended in absolute ruin for me. So, <laughs> thank God. But I'm not saying that's going to happen to you. I'm just saying I should have had a lot more insight last year, but... Uh-huh. This year, like, even the like, go back to small interactions. First night, I don't know if you were on the elevator with me, but it was like Graham and Austin. And Jacob and our e group has an acoustic guitar, and Austin's amazing with acoustic guitar and singing. Uh-huh. We're singing Graves into Gardens in a hotel lobby, waiting on the elevator, going up, and we are singing it. And I got it on video, bro, and it's awesome, bro. It's like these little tiny things that are fun. Um, yeah. But like you said, you can have like small interactions with people. And it's like, oh, I know you from this, whatever. And it can turn into like so much more. Like I'm not even yeah. saying, like relationship wise, like how, uh, like obviously 
It's just like yeah. it can be a friendship thing. It like, can be a friendship thing, or it can be more. It just depends on what God yeah. wants to do with that interaction. Yeah. And you just gotta trust God to handle that situation. Yeah. Yeah, man, it's crazy. Like even something weird. I haven't posted anything. I still haven't posted. I don't even think I. I don't know. I might post something tomorrow, or I guess today. I don't know. Sometime in the future about my album. But I made an album, and it, it was very story and narrative, whatever. But people in my student leadership program listen to it. I had people coming up to me, only two, but still I was like, that's kind of weird. And they're like, yo, I loved it. And I was like, wow, that's that's cool. But I was like so shocked and taken by the surprise. And one of them actually, I prayed over him today. I hope to reach out to him later um, to do some collaboration with him. But he was the kid who helped us in 2022, I believe on the wild actually. I think now he's like swamped because of whatever campus got like mixed up. But I think he was with us for the wild. He was the kid who preached on the object in 2022 and had the entire room standing. His name is Elijah. And now he's in student leadership. He did the same thing last year. Um, and he did pretty good last year. But the first year was wild. dude. He, do you remember this when he had everybody standing? He's just like kind of oh. shorter, dude. He had the entire room. Like When even, they did like the hot mic thing where yes, we had like a minute. Dude. No, bro, he cooked me. I ain't gonna lie. Like, he game. destroyed everybody, oh, and it was cooked. crazy. He actually united all the teams, and everybody was chanting for him, bro. Yeah. And he came to student leadership, and he's a really humble, nice dude. But he came up to me and was like, "I like the album" or whatever. And even today, I got to talk to him for a little bit. I haven't talked to him like a whole lot. It's like small interactions like that. Like it's just cool to see, you know, people that you see one time, like you said with Jade. You saw her one time at. Uh, rhythm really? night it was like literally 30 like, minutes in a line for it me. was literally like january when that happened yeah maybe was, maybe february and i was like oh i get to see this person it's not even like you're seeking them out it's just like yeah like i just oh, hey. someone was like oh wait hey i remember yeah yeah um but speaking hold up speaking on your album real quick i just want to know why what was like what was the purpose behind making it? Was it like something you felt God was really calling you to do? So it was really therapeutic for me. So I've always liked to, I've always loved music and I wanted to make music. And this year, and this issue is resolved. I want to make that very clear. It is very much so resolved. And that was very evident after this week. And I don't even know if they listened to the album. They might have. And I'm sure they know it was about them. But if they if they listen to the whole thing, they'd be probably happy about it. Um, but I just wanted to put into rationale and thought how you can be one way where one event, because it doesn't really talk about in the album, which I did a poor job of mentioning. In real life, the situation that inspired me for this, a lot of things were kind of building up and not great. A lot of things were just falling into the bad places at bad times, right? And one thing that I did made people really angry with me and kind of spite me Mm -hmm. a little understandably so i thought i was doing good and in my defense i kind of was did i really have to go that far i don't know that might have been an overstep i'm not going to get into the details situation here of course but the point of the album was to it has like three narrative tracks where i narrate through but it's from <clears throat> the perspective of your emotions and like these angry spiteful things to go into this state that you've always been in but you kind of mask and i wish i was better at producing this album but at least some people enjoy it and i think if they actually listen to the entire album and the lyrics they'd understand what it's about mm-hmm. um i think my favorite song in the album is this song called they say because i wrote those lyrics a very specific way to talk about what people say about me and the things that I get told. And there's like some lines that people could dismiss, but I have really long, like one line in particular. I have a lot of reasons, a few lines actually in this one verse that my friend features on that entire feature. I might do a podcast episode on that one feature that my friend did and why I had him come in. I Not him in particular, but somebody else come in. But that little thing like there's a lot of stuff that built up to that over a lot of years that i wanted to address so the album itself acts as something kind of just for me but other people have enjoyed it so that's cool 
Um, I really didn't think it was going to get any traction. But our boy Josh told us or told me that these student leadership kids were listening on Zoom. And I'm like, bro, what? And uh, like Jade comes up to me and he's like, oh, you, you make music? And I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, how do you know? And then Elijah comes up to me and he's like, bro, I love this song. I got to get a picture with you. I'm like, bro, what? Like, I did not expect any Dude, of this. I want to let you know something. You have a crazy impact on people, and I don't think you can see it yet, but when you look back and the way people are just changed by the stuff that you do and the way that you speak to them and the kindness and love that you show to them is is very inspiring for people that like are watching from the outside like me. I'll see you go and you'll talk to people and you'll always be so friendly to them and that kindness it cure it curates other kindness that they mm-hmm. want to show to other people and it's ch- is literally changing the entire environment of the place you're in. So I want to I'm not going to do it for you but I want to challenge you to make some type of post about your album mm-hmm. some type of like I don't know push it out there a little bit because yeah. it is a I've listened to it it's a really good album. Thanks. So Thanks, I think it could help a lot of people. My brother, um, I'm not going to say exactly what happened, got in a nasty breakup. Yeah. Um, he made an album, and I know it helped quite a few of his friends, and it he made it for yeah. therapy for himself. Yeah. It didn't really get a lot of traction, but yeah, it has a few songs. Like, even me listening to it is like, this is relatable and it relates to me so some of the smallest things that you think like eh, it's probably not a big deal to other people like that can get in them and like you never know it could it could save people thanks thanks man yeah um yeah dude when elijah came up to me the track he said that was his favorite he said i really love envy and i'm like dude that is like the worst produced song on that entire album but the lyrics that I wrote, even though poorly spoken and everything, they encapsulate how I envy people when I'm in an envious state and what that is. And I don't know if he likes it because of the beat or the lyrics or like what it actually represents. I don't know. But it was crazy. You know, I sent it to my friends and my friends, um, thankfully, sometimes are a little bit too harsh on their criticisms, but they actually like this a little bit. And then I hear people like you and some other people here, and I'm like, whoa, like, this actually had a different impact that I did not see uh, happening with these people. Um, but yeah, thank you for that about the people and the spaces. I really don't see, sometimes I do see an impact that I have on people, but like other times, like, I don't know. <laughs> like, whatever man i'm here i serve on sundays every once in a while i'll get up on a stage if like rachel wants me to like oh can you share about this i'm like sure 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 but like i don't really see myself a lot as a super impactful person until i get to a space like this where people like come up to me and like hey thank you for this 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 i'm like oh thanks sometimes like you were saying like, it couldn't be a super big deal to you, like, about those celebration texts or whatever. Uh-huh. But it can make somebody else's day. Like, a lot of, yeah. like, small things I do that I think are kind of insignificant and easy to do really impact somebody's life. Uh-huh. Exactly. In a lot of ways. I mean, you just never really know. It's It's really, like, God uses some of the small things and he turns them into big things. Like, I don't know. Um, I asked my dad, he started his, um, when he was a kid, he always wanted to be a pilot, his, yeah. his pilots, his background, he mm. was a pilot for a while with my mom, and I remember he was called to worship, mm. um, so yeah. he led worship at a small town church for about 10 years, uh, he finally got you know, God called him back to aviation, which is what he's still doing now. But mm-hmm. you never know, even if it's just a season in your life, yeah. God might call you towards something. So I really want you to pray about this music thing because that yeah. could be God, you know, pulling you towards something. 
Yeah. I, yeah. I, uh... Plus, it sounds like Kendrick Lamar, so, like... <laughs> <laughs> bro, so many people said that, and I was like, bro, what? Bro, no, bro no. it literally does. <laughs> the beats, and then the way you... The way you were talking in the first track, I'm like, yo, this is, like, meet the grams type Dude. stuff. <laughs> I had a lot of influence on, uh, from that album, but, um... Yeah... What was I gonna say? Oh, yeah, dude, your dad's such a cool dude. He's like very intentional when he's here on connections. But one of the coolest things I ever saw him do, and this is partly because of your dad, but the other half is because of the person he had the conversation with. He had a conversation with Bella, and I just got to sit there. Bella from Elevation Rhythm, and mm -hmm. I just got to sit there in EHQ. She served like I think you might have been you might have been serving that day, maybe not. I probably but was. But she came in and served on Connections, which I absolutely love Bella because she actually cares about the church. Like, I'm not saying the other people don't, but I mean, she really, really wants to give back to the church and the kids and everybody. So she was on Connections one day, and I got to see your dad talk about, is that how I learned that he was a youth, or a um, worship sure. leader? Yes. And she was actually invested in this, and he was explaining it. And I think it was me and another person sitting there watching these two discuss this. And it was just really cool seeing, like, how his life went from aviation to this, like you just explained. And seeing somebody like her so engaged in that. And then for him and us other two people there to be like, yeah, like, this is the impact you have on us, Bella. And this is the impact that you have on us, Richie, because we were both on Connections. And it's like... Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be honest. This is something that I've kind of learned because I've been around a lot of really good people. I've got a lot of really good guys in my family. Like my grandparents, amazing. My uncles. Um, I've had a lot of really good male leadership in my life and female leadership too. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, t I obviously bond a lot with my, um, you know, my grandpa, my uncles, and my dad. And one thing I've kind of learned from them all, just listening to the stories and stuff, is you're never really going to know how much you fully impact someone. Yeah. Or how much you fully impact people in general. Because you might reach someone and you might not know you reached them, but you might have had the biggest impact on their life. That, yeah. Like, I don't know. I'm trying to think of an example. But, like, say someone heard your album and they're going through something similar and like they're having a really rough time with it like they might not have any other friends and yeah they're going through a friendship crisis um i'm not sure the details of yours but. yeah thank you yeah about your impact thing i made a documentary recently and it's it was a seven month project and there were some slow times and there were some faster times and it it came out good um, sadly, not all the pieces that I wanted to be were there, but that was because of a lot of schedule conflicts. Um, I really, I didn't even really attempt to reach out to Tim, Pastor Tim, but I wanted him to be part of it. But I was like, nah, like this is too much on a tight deadline right now. I don't think this is going to work because of youth that's coming up. And same thing with Gina. Uh, do you know Gina? I know Gina, yeah. yeah. So she leads us in student leadership, and she's a great friend and a great mentor. She was really excited to do this. And then she was like, I just can't because of you, Dex. I was like, mm -hmm. all right, great. I'll find another way. Even through that, there was one interview. And I wish I had more atheists in there. But one of my friends is atheist. I actually have two. But this one wanted to do the interview with me. And he told me that he was a um, believer. Or, yeah, he used to be a believer and go to church and everything. And his grandparents are still very Christian who he lives with. But he's not. And even afterwards, I could see him in the interview. And if you watch it, you can see him, like, uh, really thinking about what I'm saying or even what he's saying. And afterwards, I'm like, when I ended it, the first thing I'm like, are you good? Like, are you good, man? And he's like, yeah. And he told me, like, wants to get into church at some point. So I can see that even my relationships with him, um, go through relationship drama that's 
thankfully I think he's over with, but I, I don't know. I haven't talked to like any of my friends because I'm like, I don't care. I'm at youth X and I'm not getting any sleep. So yeah, I'm be I should be on Instagram the whole time. <laughs> and if I am, I'm posting just, like on my story and that's it. Um, but even seeing his impact and then I got some messages from some people and they're like, not a whole lot, but just a few. And they're like, oh, I really like this part and this part. All right, so hitting closing statements here. Um, wait, 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 hold up. We got to hit the short films first. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So one more thing I did want to add. Elevation Youth has gotten way better over time. Like, they've always made cool films. But this year, they went all out. They made, I want to say, three films that I can remember. The first one was the craziest, I think. Yeah, the Maybe one, the the one uh, with the... With um, Sevilla and, like, visualizing your, like, sin... Yeah. hitting you and they're like the look like they came out of Call of Duty bro out of the war zone and nah, they're dude, like shooting sick. lasers at him and it was such a like powerful illustration and at first I was like oh man, this is like, like I don't know where this is going and it kept on going between Sibylla's character with the porn addiction and the girl with the drug addiction and uh-huh. it was showing like the same thing the same type of people trying to infiltrate their minds and kill them and it was a really powerful illustration um, of what addiction is like any type yeah. and how sin tries to get to you. Well, we we didn't touch on, like, addiction, but we touched on sin in e-group time with uh, yeah. Pat and our group. And I really think it is so true. Like, sin, in the moment, it feels good. You'll feel good for about four or five seconds. And then... Mm-hmm. After that, the devil is going to use that to literally cripple your life and make you feel like, yo, I'm I'm not worthy enough to go to God. He is going to use that to get further, to get you further from God. Yeah. So you always just got to be careful with sin and stuff. And obviously, you're not going to be perfect. Everyone's going to sin. Yeah. But you want to try your best not to. Yeah. Um, the other film was just not super duper like robust but the way that they shot it it was just like everything was cinematic this time and it was like jesus and satan in the in the desert and with like some cool. dune stuff yeah it was like, <laughs> like dune the dune, dune 2 music. trailer dude the dune 2 music is playing in the background but uh <laughs> it was still cool man like it was cool just to see them visualize it but i think the craziest part of youth x they had this service today before one of the pastors came out it was a very they called it chapel and they had this story, I can't even remember this girl's name, but I, she probably is senior at this point. And it was this really sad story about how she was physically abused in her household. I think she said physical, yeah. And, yeah, by uh, her mother and father. Oh, her mother and father? Yeah. yeah. So she ran away from home. She wanted to kill herself because that would have been easier in the living. And her friend ended up inviting her to e-group or rhythm night. And now she is adopted by her e-group leader which is a crazy turn of events and there's so much that has to go into like that custody and stuff um even i mean it might i don't know how it was in that situation but i'm sure it was stressful for those parents now um and they already had a family but to get to see her go out there on the stage and sing a song that we've never even heard in I was talking to somebody, and they're like, bro, that was, like, the best song Elevation yeah. Rhythms made. They need to release that. And that was just, like, a snippet of it. You could tell it was just, like, a demo. Yeah, that her voice about. is so beautiful, bro. Yeah. yeah. I mean, honestly, all of Elevation Rhythm has some amazing singers. When they were doing the um, the prayer chant earlier yes. today, I don't know if you remember that. That was just, it was a beautiful moment. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. With that. That film was just crazy, and then her coming out and singing that was crazy. And like you said, Elevation Rhythm, they've been, they might have some new people. I don't know. It looked like there were some new people out there. Of course, the OGs. 100%. But uh, they've been getting far, far. It's not like they started out back, but they've, like, they've gotten so much better over the years. And even from their first studio album, which I got, I, did you go to that recording? I did not. Okay. You was, forget, I'm a lot younger than you. It was cool. Yeah, it was open to everybody, though. Yeah, I know, but it was like... I was 20, I 21, yeah, okay. Yeah. But I went to that one. It was really cool. The album's still good, but this third album, whenever they release it, I think it's going to be their best. 
um, and maybe the most songs, but they've been just getting so much better at writing songs and knowing how to perform them live and sing them mm -hmm. and everything with them. And it's really cool, man. Well, um, it definitely helps that Elevation lets the singers from Rhythm help come out and sing on Sundays. Yeah. And one thing that's also really cool about us um, going to the broadcast campus and stuff, we get to sing songs before they're releasing the albums and all that stuff. Yeah, like the new album dropped today, and I'll listen to it, but I think I've heard already 90% of that album, and it's 90 minutes. But that's how long they take to like produce these songs. But we've been hearing this for like seven months now. Yeah, but can, hold up. I do want to actually... I know we're gonna do close. We were gonna do closing statements after the um, uh, oh, short films, yeah. but it's whatever. Um, this new album that they're dropping is generational, man. This thing is insane. Some of the songs, Great. some of the lyrics they have. I've already mentioned it to you and Pat. My favorite one is a new thing coming. And hold on, yeah. Just the part where it goes into the bridge and it's like I can see a cloud, yeah. heavy with rain. It's just it gets me every time, and it's like. Just like you can, it's just God's coming. Like mm -hmm. even when you're in your rough times, like even when it's hard and stuff, He's there. He's coming. Like revival is coming. It's healing. It's coming. Mm -hmm. Grace is coming. Yeah. Like it's gonna be there. Yeah. Yeah, and I was really happy. I think they they did sing that at Youth X like one time this year. Yeah, they sang um, it the first uh, the first worship experience. Yeah. And I was really happy that they did that. Um, and. Even, dude, they have a song on there now that at Youth X 23 was just a small little moment. They made an entire song out of it. And of course, the youth love it. And that's on the album, It's the Way We Love You. That is and such a good song. Holy cow. It's a great song. And they kind of based like the merch and some of the ideas um, on that this year about like the names of God. And that's been something we've been oh, yeah. learning about. Come and on, you Yahweh the, hat. Yahweh bucket hat. <laughs> Yo, uh, it's tough. Hold on, I'm putting that on. It's, and it's great. Like, we're actually getting to learn about stuff that's, you know, useful um, yeah. and interesting and that probably you haven't heard a hundred times, you know? And when we went through the, like, different names of God uh, earlier in, uh, what's it called, uh, Youth Nights, that was really cool to me, honestly. It showed me, like, a kind of different view of Jesus. Yeah. And especially the way Patsy Group did it, because we like, you know, we like to incorporate some fun stuff in it as well. Yeah. But we also are done to earth. Yeah. Definitely. So. Yeah. Yeah. But that was it with the worship and uh, short films. Even like the baptism video, it was just nicely shot and everything. It wasn't even anything super crazy. You know? It wasn't even edited, it was literally live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and that was awesome, too. Um, and those people being vulnerable with their testimonies was cool. Um, so I'm excited to see what they do more at Elevation with their films. They have a really talented creative team. Uh, uh -huh. I wish they would make a lot more. Um, but uh, a really cool thing they're doing, which I guess is creative. Um, I haven't checked it out yet. They're doing the books of the Bible over in the entire next year. And they already have Genesis out. I'm sure in a few weeks or maybe like next week we'll get Exodus. But they're doing basically the audio book of the Bible throughout the entire year, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, for I guess how many books are there in the Bible? Sixty something. Sixty. I want to say sixty six. I might. Okay, I so might be wrong. Hold on. I was I'm gonna, gonna look say, that up real quick. I know it's not fifty two. I was gonna say like every week of the year, but that doesn't add up. So some no. of them are gonna have to double. I bet you though, like some of the letters in the New Testament, like. If it's a one and a two, they might combine those. Yeah. Uh, it's 66. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. And yeah, 66. Because I remember that from the, uh, what's it called? That I don't know if y'all watched it. It was like an old thing for kids. Like When I was really young, it was like 66 different books. Oh. <laughs> and it just stuck with me for some reason. Yeah, and there's like 73 or 74 in the Catholic Bible. I remember that from Bible is History class, um, which I don't even know which those books are called. They just had you remember that. You should take that class at our school, bro. That's a fun class. Is it easy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, especially if you know the Bible. But you'll learn some interesting stuff. They got a Bible as literature and history. 
Okay. Um, I never got to take the literature because North Carolina credits are weird with my past school, but whatever. Um, but you have any closing remarks with all of Youth X24? You, okay, I just want to say this has definitely been by far the best Youth X I've been to. Um, they showed improvement, especially I think the biggest, the best thing that happened was definitely splitting the middle schools and high schools up. I would love to see that again next year. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure what the plan is for next year. They released the, uh, go ahead and register, but I don't, I didn't really see like a, like sort of plan, like where we're going to be or anything. I feel like it'll be like this year again. Yeah. Which will be cool and they'll just improve it. Yeah, um, but I am really excited for next year. Um, it's honestly just amazing what this church can do through a youth ministry. Like you don't, you don't see youth ministries like this anywhere. Like this youth ministry is one of a kind. I believe it is the best in the world. Honestly, the way that they, the way that Pastor Stephen and Pastor Ollie, and our youth pastors, uh, Pastor Tim, obviously John Rush. Yeah. Uh, all the all the campus pastors yeah. and stuff. The way that they can connect to the youth is, it's just amazing. And it's cool to see, like a church doing that. You don't get that very often. Yeah. Yeah. My uh, my closing statements is honestly I was not very hyped for youth, like, especially after last year. Um, but once they said middle school and high school separate, I was like, all right, whatever. And then once they got closer and closer, I was like, okay, it'll be, like, something fun to do for the week. And I, one of my friends tonight, uh, she was like, I'm so sad it's going to end. I'm thinking to myself, like, yeah, it actually is sad because you get in this lifestyle at UFX and it's like, oh, you have to leave. And it's like in a couple of hours I'm going to be at home. Hopefully yeah. asleep. <laughs> oh, I'm <laughs> definitely going to be. If there isn't any hopefully about it, it's a definitely for me. I'm going to bed. If I don't go to bed right when I get home, I'm going to bed at like 8. No, because okay, I'm going to bed when I, right when I get home, and I'm not waking up till Saturday morning. Yeah, because you got the beach trip. Yeah, that's going to that's gonna be fun, except for the fact I only get one night in my own bed before I have to leave for a week. Yeah. That'll be interesting. But it's chill. Know. Um, well, I was saying, um, oh my gosh, the, the way that they really improved, like we've been saying the entire time, is a crazy improvement, um, and I wasn't, like, I was like, okay, something fun to do, get out of the house, and I wasn't really expecting much, I was not coming here for a girl, I was, I wasn't even like, so I was like, okay, I'm here, and you like, yeah, I get to see the boys. And it turned out to be a lot more um, than yeah. just the boys, as you could tell from the, all the experiences we've had. Um, all um, a lot of crazy stuff has happened, um, and very meaningful, impactful stuff. Uh, so I just gotta say, thank you to I'm sure I'll be sending this to people, but thank you to everybody. You know, pastors uh, Stephen and Holly, you got. Pastor Tim and Rebecca Summers. Yeah. Um, even though, like Tim said today, it would be his favorite sermon, but the least amount of words, it was a crazy thing. I, I, it wasn't even really a sermon. It was like a moment, like he said. It was just crazy. Yeah, how I mean, it all worked. Uh, and the way that Pastor Tim preaches, it always gets me. Like every single time, it's like I'm always, I always end up touched in a way that doesn't happen often. Yeah. Like. If he's up there on youth nights, and it's it's not really, like, during, like, the actual sermon sermons, because obviously, like, the Sunday sermons with, you know, the adults, it's, like, more centered on things that are applicable to uh, adults. But yeah. when it's youth nights and it's just us and him, it's, like, dang, he, he really gets me. Yeah. Yeah. Um... You know, thank you to the pastors at our church. Uh, thank you for everybody behind the scenes that get to do stuff. Thank you, like the e group leaders, like Pat. Not just Pat though, like Isaiah. I saw Isaiah do so much. Like a yeah, Pat especially in the like, hotel. I want to shout out uh, for the Valley Hotel. Shout out everyone that helped it uh, run smoothly. 
obviously you know, uh Holiday Inn, W Hotel. Thanks for putting up with us. Yeah. Um, again. <laughs> oh yeah. Again. again. Uh, <laughs> thank you, uh, Rachel. Obviously, you were of course on top of this hotel. You know, you made sure everyone was safe. You and uh, Mr. John, uh, the the beast, the man, yep. the myth, the legend. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Look, this man. The first night there was a bang. And we go out the door what? to, like, look and see what it was. This is after lights out and stuff, after we did room checks. And he's like, yo, y'all heard that too? And we're like, yeah. He's like, yeah, I just heard it. I was downstairs on the first floor. I'm like, yo, what? How did this man hear that? Oh, dude. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to him. Literally the only security guard and can hear everything on all floors, bro. Literally, we were downstairs today. And he's like, if you sneak out, I will find you. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like, uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Scary. But shout out to everybody that made this possible. Um, yeah, man. Shout out to literally everybody yeah. involved that does this and the tithers that gets paid for this type of stuff um, um the impact that y'all are having on the next generation my voice is gone if you yeah, can't my, tell my like too. that is how much we are worshiping and how much we are you know really giving everything even our voice to the lord yeah. <laughs> literally yeah and, literally and you know just the way that it impacts us and the way it's going to impact other people so throughout our schools, throughout the Charlotte, uh, Toronto, Orlando, Orlando, North Carolina, South Carolina, everywhere. It's going to affect kids, the next generation, everywhere. I believe that this church has probably the best chance to, I guess you could say, save this generation. Because yeah, this is a r- rough generation. But yeah, I think, oh, yo, sure, bro. is that Mr. John? Is Mr. Well, John? We're going to have to end the podcast here, but we got to talk with John. So peace and love you all.